إن الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي نزل الفرقان على عبده ليكون للعالمين نذيرا وخلق السماوات والأرض في ستة أيام وكان عرشه على الماء ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا ذلك بأن الله هو الحق وأنه يحيي الموتى وأنه على كل شيء قدير وأن الساعة آتية لا ريب فيها وأن الله يبعث من في القبور وتبارك الذي له ملك السماوات والأرض وما بينهما وعنده علم الساعة وإليه ترجعون نحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ به من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له أحده في أسمائه وصفاته ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الرسول النبي الأمي الذي يؤمن بالله وكلماته أرسله ربه رحمة للعالمين وسيد المرسلين وخاتم النبيين بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعة فالذين آمنوا به وعزروه ونصروه واتبعوا النور الذي أنزل معه أولئك هم المفلحون ومن يعص الله ورسوله ويتعدى حدوده يدخله نارا وكان ذلك على الله يسيرا اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم إن زلزلة الساعة شيء عظيم يوم ترونها تذهل كل مرضعة عما أرضعت وتضع كل ذات حمل حملها وترى الناس سكارى وما هم بسكارى ولكن عذاب الله شديد يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم واكشوا يوما لا يجزي والد عن ولده ولا مولود هو جاز عن والده شيئا إن وعد الله حق فلا تغرنكم الحياة الدنيا ولا يغرنكم بالله الغرور يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون ثم أما بعد My dear respected brothers and sisters What day is it today? Where the simple answer is يوم الجمعة But يوم الجمعة when? Some will say, this is Yom al in the month of September, in the year 2017. And some will say, no, this is Yom al in the month of Muharram, in the year 1439. But those dates of calendars are relative to an event. So when human beings decided to start to record time and create calendars, Calendars always have a point of reference, an event in time and history that became the starting point of the calendar, not the starting point of time. When time started, we do not know. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of time, the one that is ever living, al hayyul qayyum said in Surah Al-Insan, the surah is called Insan. هَلْ أَتَى عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ حِينٌ مِّنَ الدَّهْرِ لَمْ يَكُنْ شَيْئًا مَذْكُورًا Has not been a length of time that has passed when human beings were nothing to be mentioned. لَمْ يَكُنْ شَيْئًا مَذْكُورًا There was a time the concept of a human being did not exist in anyone's consciousness or conversation. SubhanAllah, how much time is that? We do not know. There are some people who disbelieve in Allah. And you know what they say? Our life is it. إِنَّمَا حَيَاتُنَا الدُّنْيَا نَمُوتُ وَنَحْيَا وَمَا يُهْلِكُنَا إِلَّا الدَّهْرِ 
People say, we just live and we die. Life is a cycle. It goes on forever and ever. And the only thing that actually destroys us is time. Even time has a beginning from our perspective. And time has an end. And only Allah, al Hayyul Qayyum, is not limited by time. It's not impacted by time. So my dear respected brothers and sisters, when we reflect upon the calendar, how much time has passed? 1439 years, 1,439 years from the Hijra event. That's what the Hijri calendar shows us. Or the year 2017, which is 2017 years from the mistaken birth of Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam. That's a short period of time in human history. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, تَعْوُجُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالْرُوحُ إِلَيْهِ بِيَوْمٍ كَانَ مِقْدَارُهُ خَمْسِينَ أَلْفَ سَنَةٍ Malaika returned to Allah in a day. To us, which would equal 50,000 years. The estimate of it is like 50,000 human years. A day, Malaika returned to him. Subhanallah. But how much time then, when Allah looks at all events, how much time has passed? Dear respected brothers and sisters, let us reflect upon the Quran and in its concepts of time. And you will see there is one concept of time that is prevalent in the Quran. And there is one concept of time that is the most essential in the Quran. The most prevalent concept and the most essential concept. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the creation of the heavens and the earth in days. As he stated, Allahu alladhi khalaqa samawati wal arda wa ma baynahuma fi sittati ayya thumma stawa ala al-arsh. In Surah Sajda and in other places in the Quran. As we recited in the beginning from Surah Hud. Wa huwa alladhi khalaqa samawati wal arda fi sittati ayya wa kana arshuhu. In Surah Yunus, Allah SWT says, Inna rabbakum alladhi khalaqa samawati wal arda fi sittati ayyam, thumma stawa ala al-arsh yudabbiru al-amr. So Allah keeps mentioning that the creation of the heavens and the earth took place in six days. Ayyam. Then what is the concept of a yom? To us, the concept of a day is only relative to the revolution of the earth. So Allah's concept of a day is different because Allah gave us an equivalent. وَإِنَّ يَوْمًا عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ كَأَلْفِ سَنَةٍ مِمَّا تَعُدُّونَ Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated in Surah Al-Hajj. So it is relative to us. If you stand on Mars, your day is relative to Mars. Jupiter, Saturn, your day is relative to where you are standing. But what about all of this creation in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why did Allah take six days? He chose to take six days to create things in stages. If you look to Surat Fussilat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us some type of gradual stages. Are you disbelieving in the one that created the earth in two days? While you associate others that you call and he gave us the stages that the beginning of it is two days and then later on four days so the earth was created in six periods and so were the heavens created in six periods so a day what is a day then dear respected brothers and sisters if you look to the quran a day is a cyclical period that is marked by a specific beginning and a specific end and a day consists of an alternation of two states of light in our own reality. In the day, if you break it up in the Quran, a day has a nail and a naha. Two parts of it, sometimes equal if you're equatorial. And then when one of them elongates, the other one shortens. Subhanallah. Yulijun layla fin nahar wa yulijun nahar. And that's how it works. That is what a day is from our vantage point. It has a specific beginning and an end, and it is marked by two periods that alternate in a cycle, and it continues cyclically moving forward. That's what a day is. 
If you look to the Quran, a day is mentioned over 400 times. There is no concept of time so well mentioned in the Quran like a day. Over 400 times. Why is the day so important then as being the most prominent mention in the Quran with regards to time? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that He created this universe and beyond it in six days. And then He made His istiwa. And now He is now sending down the orders of how this universe should run. All this while, human beings are nothing to be mentioned. We do not come into existence, subhanAllah. In those six days, if you look to the traces of the ilm in the Quran, we come into existence after the universe is in order. We're very new to come here, subhanAllah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created mankind, mentioned and created mankind, and then brought us down. That, brothers and sisters, would logically be day number seven. How long will we live? The scientific traces of the modern man are just a couple of tens of thousands of years old. The traces of human beings as we see ourselves is very new. We have traces of dinosaurs that go millions of years. 60 million years we're talking about dinosaurs. But there are no traces of man that long. It's a very recent trace that we have. In all the fossil records we have, maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will unearth more. But when scientists are confused about where did man come from, there is no clear explanation where did the modern man come from. Their theory is he evolved from an ape. That's the only logical thing. We have fossil remains of hominid that are here before. We have fossil remains of primates that were here before. Then in their mind, logically, the human being evolved from the ape when they could not explain simply that man seems to just emerge on earth somehow. If we evolve from apes, why are there still apes living? And fossil records have proven that the, that theory that we evolved from the chimpanzee was debunked years ago when they found a fossil in Ethiopia. And when they analyzed it, they said, we were wrong. Human beings could not have evolved from the chimpanzee. But the time is moving, brothers and sisters. It's, the day is moving to what? So if we assume we're living in day number seven, what's the next day that will come after day number seven? If you think about it, there is one day that Allah mentions the most in Quran. In fact, many of the references of a day refer to that day more than any other day. And that day has 20 names or attributes in Al-Quran. The next day, Allah has given it many names that are scary, should make the hair on your back stand. One of his names for standing is Yawmul Qiyamah. It has another name, Yawmul Hasra, a day of regret. Yawmul Azifah, a day of sorrow. Yawmul Taghabun, the day of mutual loss. Yawmul Deen, the day of accountability. Yawmul Haq, the day of truth. Yawmul Jamma, the day of coming together. Yawmul Hash, the day of assembly. There's so many names for this day that it should make us all think that there is no day important in the existence of creation except day number eight because in that day all the universe as we know it comes to an end for us to transition to a new world and reality <coughs> and when Allah described that day the reason why he sent Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam that is the primary function of the Prophet That's the primary mission. Allah says, وَكَذَلِكَ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ قُرْآنًا عَرَبِيًّا 
لتنذر أم القرى ومن حولها وتنذر يوم الجمع لا ريب فيه فريق في الجنة وفريق في السعيد the only day that matters in your existence and mine is the day Allah does yawma idin yatafarraqun. The day Allah does a separation where some of us go to Jannah and some of us go to Jahannam. That's one of his names as well and attributes. Yawma idin yatafarraqun. That's the only day that matters. No matter how long you live in this world, no matter how many years pass, and as we welcome a new year in the Hijri calendar, <coughs> a new year, brothers and sisters, there is no old year or new year. The year that passed has eroded us. And the year that is now is a witness and a warning to us. That's all that is. No old or new year. The time that has passed was witness over us, our deeds recorded, that's all. And the one that comes is just warning us that time is running out. So every year that we have does not increase our longevity, but the opposite. Every year that comes is the countdown to the certainty of death. And that is how we need to change our concept of Time. Not to be like those that say, Time just comes and goes. We live and we die. Don't be like those who say that you must make good use of time by enjoying yourself. Live like there's no tomorrow means enjoy yourself today as much as you can. If there was no tomorrow, would you be enjoying yourself? Or would you be praying for the Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So mankind has lost even our focus of the concept of time because day number eight is the worst day for the entire creation. Allah says, I have never been angry like I am on the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah. It is the day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expose Jahannam. إِذَا رَأَتْهُ مِن مَكَانٍ بَعِيدٍ سَمِعُوا لَهَا تَغَيُّضًا وَزَفِيرًا When Allah brings Jahannam, from afar, you can even hear it. It's screaming. Very tough angels. They're pulling it with chains. The thing is like a screaming animal. It's like you tie this animal that's been caged. It's ready to be released. It's yelling. It's screaming. It's spitting out flames. Just by looking at it, your eyes burn. SubhanAllah. That's what Allah says about it. And when it comes very close, it starts to call for human beings. On that day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, everyone will be kneeling down. Everyone quiet, only little whispering. Fala to smell big Day number eight is the most critical day in existence, and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions it the most. But at the same time, what happens when that day ends? I like to end this first part by good news from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Yasin. Inna ashab jannatin yawm fi shuhulin faqihum hum wa azwajuhum at the end of that day, Ashab al Jannah, what will they be doing now? At the end of that day, they will be now enjoying all that live like there's no tomorrow. Well, the people of Jannah, Jannah is their tomorrow. They are enjoying themselves that way. These in fact, they're only busy enjoying themselves. Not alone. 
them and their spouses and their children and all generations of them. They're just reclining in high places in enjoyment. And then they're receiving all the best fruits and anything they ask for. And they hear salam from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salam qawla min rabbi rahim. Salam, this greeting each other as salamu alaikum today. If you see a Muslim say as salamu alaikum in public, they're ashamed, they say hi. That's salam you give a Muslim who's hiding from you. Subhanallah. That's the greeting of people of Jannah. And that's what you get from Allah. The malaika greet you when you enter Jannah. Salamun alaikum tibtum fadkuluha khali. At the door of Jannah, you get salam. And in Jannah, illa qila salam and salam. Everybody only has salam for everybody. Isn't that the best day to be living after the last day? And the last day, Allah call it Yawmul Akhir, one of its names. The last day of our existence in dunya, when we transfer to Jannah, it's a new day that has no sunrise, no sunset. You have no more concept of time in Jannah. There is no aging. You're always young. You're always sick. There is no sickness. You're always healthy. And <laughs> No more sickness, no, no cold, no flu, no allergies ever again. You live, you never die. To the point after people in Jannah enjoy, they ask a question. Imagine somebody enjoying Jannah so long, they even ask that question. Not if you just enter Jannah, you worry about death. You worry about death after time. Allah says, no. That was just the first death in dunya. That's the only one you have. And when you enter Jannah, you never leave it. Day number seven, brothers and sisters. What do you want to do in day number seven, the second of Muharram, 1439? What do you want to do? How many days left? How many years left? We do not know. What do you want to do today? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wa al-mursaleen Sayyidina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een Wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila umidin thumma amma ba'd A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim Inna fi khalqi al-samawati wal-ard Wa akhtilaf al-layli wal-nahar La ayatin li uli al-albab الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار In the creation of the heavens and the earth and the alternation of night and day Allah said our ayat for people who reflect They just don't wake up and look at the day and say oh it's another day I'm just going to go to work I'm just going to leave and I'm going to die I'm going to make money they look at the creation of the heavens and the earth, the alternation of night and day, and they think about it. They remember Allah standing, sitting on, on their sides. They thinking, and realizing, This is not all for fun. This is not all for nothing. The only thing that they're concerned about, they help out. That anyone who enters hellfire is the ultimate disgrace. And likewise, in the short amount of time we have, Rabbana innana sami'na munadiya yunadi lil iman an aminu bi rabbikum fa'amanna. O Allah, We've heard the call of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By your rahmah, you made us Muslim. O oh Allah, accept us as believers. Rabbana faghfir lana dhunubana wa kaffir anna sayyatina wa 
وتغفل عن الأبرار ربنا وآتنا ما وعدتنا على رسلك ولا تخزنا يوم القيامة إنك لا تخلف That's what a mu'min is worried about يوم القيامة Nothing else And to say that I've heard the call of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam سمعنا وأفعنا I hear and I obey and I'm going to live the rest of my life this way because the most prominent concept of time is the day the most essential part of the day that Allah mentioned in Quran and mentioned it only once if you don't pay attention to it you will be lost and that is If you break down a day you have a leil and a nahar and then that's the two halves if you break down the end of a nahar that period is called the period of us where time is short compressed and it moves quickly and it's at the time the day is declining towards the end that's why allah swore by an us to say that mankind is at a loss in the short life we have it doesn't matter how long human beings will live allah says all that time compared to all time is that small so that when Allah resurrects you Yawm Al-Qiyamah, when they ask each other, how long? Ma labithu ghayra sa'ah. They say we didn't even spend an hour, more than an hour in dunya. An hour in dunya. Sa'atan min nahar. Only an hour during what? An nahar. Sa'atan min nahar in al-asr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, unless you spend that time, in what? You believe. Illa al-ladina amanu wa amilu salihat. Unless you enjoy to truth and patience, all the time you spend in this dunya is wasted. There's nothing you get out of the barakah of time unless you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before you congratulate anyone, think about how much time you have now, not tomorrow. Now, how much time today, Yom Jumu'ah, for me to make istighfar, for me to ask Allah, to forgive me all my sins. This is the month of Muharram. It's a sacred month. Brothers and sisters, Allah says, فَلَا تَظْلِمُوا فِي إِنَّا Don't wrong yourselves and others. Muslims worldwide, lay down the arms. Respect the month of Muharram. It is not only a sacred month where fighting is not allowed, it is also the month we have Ashura that is coming, inshallah, next Saturday, the 10th of Muharram. So you can fast the 9th and the 10th or the 10th, 11th. Remember that, Ashura. That is the time that Allah saved Musa and Bani Israel. If we want Allah to save us from the worst kind of torture, Allah can do it. We have to turn to Allah and submit to Him. Brothers and sisters, there's nothing that will change the condition of the Muslims except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bani Israel were powerless in Egypt. They had no political way of changing it. So there's no United Nations at that time with Musa to go complain about. There is no one that could have changed the minds of the Egyptian. Allah saved them from that punishment. Allah saved them. Not another organization. Until we submit to Allah, Allah will not change our condition. There is no happy new year for our brothers and sisters in Arakan, now called Rakhine. There is no happiness for our brothers and sisters in Syria, in Yemen, in Iraq, in Kashmir. All the Muslim countries, there are no happiness for anyone. There's strife, there's poverty, there's injustice. All of it, we're suffering. But if we turn to Allah, Allah will uplift the suffering. And no one can change it. And any Muslim that is having a good time and enjoying life, wherever they are, they're the ones who have one small problem in their heart. You cannot look at the condition of the Muslims and be happy. No way. Unless you love dunya so much and you hate death so much. Let's raise our hands in dua, brothers and sisters, this great day of Jumu'ah and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be the solver 
of our problems. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi. Ya ayuhal ladina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad. Kama sallayta wa sallamta wa barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim. Inna ka hamidun majid. Allahumma ahdina fi man hadayt. وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا في ما أعطيت وقنا واصرف عنا برحمتك شر ما قضيت فإنك تقضي بالحق ولا يطع عليك اللهم عز الإسلام المسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام المسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام المسلمين وانصر الإسلام المسلمين وفي لجميع موت المسلمين يا عزيز يا كريم اللهم طهي قلوبنا وفرج قلوبنا وحد صفوفنا يا أرحم الراحمين واصلح ذات بيننا يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة عين واجعلنا من متقين إماما ربنا اغفر لنا وربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة فإن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر فلذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنع